hello everybody welcome to the part 2 video and in this video i'll be covering the elite i20 so the elite i20 was launched in october 2008 in the paris motor show and it replaced the hyundai gets the car went through some more design changes in 2012 following the new fluidic design philosophy with a slightly retuned engine with new headlamps new front grille tail lamps and fog lamps coupled with slight changes in the dashboard it upgraded the looks further but the things drastically moved upwards when the current second generation elite i20 was launched in august 2014 which was actually a major upgrade making it the most desirable and admired car by critics because of which uh, it won many awards in 2014 15 and 16 i20 presently is one of the most top selling cars in the hyundai stable after the grand i10 uh, the i20 comes with three engine options uh, presently and in petrol you will have an option of a 1.2 liter and a 1.4 liter MPI dual VVT petrol engine and in diesel you will get only one option which is the 1.4 CRDI diesel engine uh, so coming to the technical specification of the engines um, So let's start with the petrol. Uh, the 1.2 liter uh, petrol is actually a Kappa petrol engine, which has a displacement of 1,197 cc, developing 81.8 bhp at 6,000 rpm. The engine is a dual VT VT 16 valve four cylinder petrol engine, and uh, this is actually uh, having a torque of 114 newton meters, which is developed at 4,000 rpm. and it is mated to only a 5 speed manual gearbox so uh, coming down to the 1.4 liter mpi uh, dual vt vt petrol engine uh, this is actually having a displacement of 1368 cc which develops 99 bhp at 6000 rpm it has a peak torque of 132 newton meters which is developed at 4000 rpm it's mated to a four speed automatic gearbox so if you're looking for an automatic variant in petrol engine so you'll only have the 1.4 liter available in this so um, coming down to a little details details about the diesel engine a uh, diesel engine comes with a 1.4 liter u2 cri engine uh, which has a displacement of 1396 cc which is developed at 88.7 bhp which is at 4000 rpm and it has a peak torque of 220 newton meters uh, which is developed at 1500 to 2750 rpm uh, the diesel engine comes with a 6 speed manual transmission uh, which helps the engine maximizing the fuel efficiency and performance So um if i come down to the mileage of the car uh, the fuel efficiency figures as claimed by Hyundai for the petrol variant is 18.6 kilometers uh, for the um, petrol as i said and for the diesel it is 21.76 kmpa uh, but uh, if i talk about in the normal driving condition um, as to my opinion and updates that i have received from users and few of my friends the petrol engine in city um, has an average of 9 to 12 kilometers to a liter and if you take it to a highway you may get a maximum of 15 kilometers uh, per liter and if i talk about the diesel it's somewhat the same uh, figures uh, in the city which is 9 to 12 and on the highway it is slightly better uh, which is coming to a 20 kilometers per liter um, thanks to the 6 speed manual gearbox that i mentioned and it's a pretty nice option that you get so and uh, please note the figures that i am sharing is purely user specific and review that i have received and uh, can vary depending upon your driving styles uh, the best way to get the best fuel efficiency from any car as per my opinion is to ensure that you change the gears when the engine rpm touches 2000 rpm and maintain a light foot drive and do not exceed more than 2500 rpm and that would help you in getting the maximum fuel efficiency output from your car and i would say from any car 
the Elite I-20 comes in six variants. Uh, first being the Era, which is the base variant, followed by the Magna Executive, Magna Automatic, which is available only in the 1.4 liter petrol variant. Then it has the Sports variant, Asta, and the Asta Optional variants. Uh, the standard feature includes dual airbags, central locking, impact sensing, auto door unlocks, seat belt pretensioners, driver and passenger side boat, immobilizer, dual horn, dual trip meter, tachometer, digital clock, gear shift indicator, blue interior illumination, two power windows and internally adjustable manual outside mirror which is provided in the base variant so these features are actually part of the base variants so if i uh, talk about the top end variant which is the asta optional it comes loaded with features like side and curtain airbags a 6.9 inch color touch screen display automatic headlamps speed sensing auto door locks clutch lock smart key height adjustable seat belts for driver and passenger side projector headlamps led drls and positioning lamps and it comes with black waistline molding at the ex exterior and which comes up with the chrome outside door handles diamond cut alloy wheels leather wrapped gear knobs and steering wheels uh, which is pretty good to hold uh, the steering position uh, reminder is one best thing that it has which comes with a service reminder parking sensor display auto unlock function a 60 by 40 split rear seats adjustable headrest at the rear uh, push button start and stop windows which has the auto up and down along with a pinch guard option for the driver's side rear view wash and wipe luggage lamp etc so uh, the interior of the i20 is quite spacious uh, comes with a dual tone black and beige theme the steering wheel is a three spoke unit which is the same as shared in the accent and the grand item especially the power window button as well I must say the quality of the dashboard and the switch gears is very good and feels quite premium which gives a feel of an expensive high-end luxury car. I said this because the fit and finish of the car inside is very good which is equivalent to the Volkswagen Polo. This, is, this gives you the feel uh, of, of, of money well spent. And uh, talking about the music system in particular which comes with the top end Asta variant, it's a 6.9 inch color touch screen display which has an audio video navigation system along with smartphone connectivity which supports Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and mirror link functions which is really good. Uh, the sound output is also really nice and clear which comes with a nicely laid out 8 speaker system housed on all the 4 doors. Uh, it's a combination of 4 speakers and 4 tweeters uh, which is really nice. So now um, coming to the seating comfort, the front seats provide adequate support which is which has excellent lateral support which is very good for long drives and coupled with a centrally fixed armrest which gives you a great comfort while driving. Uh, the rear seat is also very comfortable and has a decent legroom and headroom. The, the transmission tunnel at the middle is bare minimal and the best part is that you get a rear AC vent which is really nice. Um, the i20 is the only car in the comparison which actually provides you with a rear AC vents uh, which is very practical move by Hyundai, I, I must say that. So uh, coming to the boot space, it is pretty well laid out with a 285 litre of boot space and though in the comparison list it's the lowest after the Polo which has a 280 litre of boot space. And the leader in space i would say is Bellino and jazz and, um, and which which actually the top chart is coming up to be the jazz scoring with a 354 liter of boot space and uh, backed by the Bellino, which has a 339 liters of boot space uh, this is 
there is a bit of a loading lip that is manageable in the i20 and the top end variant uh, comes with a 60 by 40 series that gives you a bit of more flexibility in managing the boot. So coming to the dimension of the car, i20 has a length of 3985mm, has a width of 1734mm, a height of 1505mm, a wheelbase of 2570mm with a ground clearance of 170mm. So now coming to the most important part, the safety of the car. The car scored 4 star rating in the Euro NCAP test which is really good as it comes with 6 airbags including ABS which makes the car very safe. So now before concluding uh, this i20 video, let me uh, talk about things which I did not like in i20 and the areas of improvement that Hyundai needs to work on. So the first thing uh, I did not like is the MID display that does not come with a real time fuel efficiency indicator which is quite common these days in most of the cars and i20 is the only car in the comparison today that does not have this feature. Um, second thing is that I did not like the steering feedback which is a little vague and does not give a responsive feel at higher speeds. So that's something that uh, Hyundai needs to work on. Uh, the third thing is the fuel efficiency figures of the 1.2 litre petrol engine which in city can give you at the max 9 to 10 km per litre and on the highway not more than 15 km per litre which is not a good figure. And I would like to tell you that uh, this figure that I am quoting today is once again the feedback that I have received from the owners of the 1.2 litre petrol engine who have been using the car since quite long. So that's just one thing. The last point is and the fourth point is the after sale service which is good as uh, it is in comparison with the other competitors in the market. But there's one thing uh, which is a concern and that is the uh, parts availability that locally so if you want to have your car repaired or if you repaired in the local market or if you want to purchase the parts in the local market you might not get most of the parts as the parts are available at the dealership but there is no counter sale of the parts so you'll have to get your car repaired at the Hyundai dealership so getting your car repaired locally which is a if it's a Hyundai car can be a bit of a problem so uh, this is all I have about the Hyundai i20 I hope you like this video so let's move on to the second video thank you and stay watching bye bye